Hello, I'm going to show you what I call the forgotten miracle tool. Uh, I, I don't think it works miracles, but it is a tool that I do use the phrase, it's a bridge tool. And I don't think I've heard anyone uh, ever use that phrase. I may be coining that now, but a bridge tool is a tool that's so so useful, so valuable in so many trades that, in my opinion, it bridges across whole categories of trades. This, on the packaging, um, this was called a two and a half inch paint scraper. Well, if you saw my video, I did a two part video. I've been making a stool and I have a number of videos with techniques and instruction. And I have a two-part video of scooping out this oak, two-inch thick oak chair seat. I dropped it about three-quarters down through the middle to give it curvature. And I had these scrapers, and I talk about and show how vital they were to that process, that task. So I go out to our favorite uh, big orange store. I bought the largest one they had. Because I got to thinking about what I said in the video that before long, they won't sell these anymore. They'll say, who, who scrapes wood? Nobody uses that. Nobody scrapes paint. Nobody, nobody's going to scrape wood with that. They don't need that. And that's the way they do with tools. You know, when something is useful, you can sharpen it yourself. It's low cost. It achieves incredible results. That's the kind of tool they do away with. And they'll leave you the tungsten carbide one. I bought one of those ridiculous tungsten carbide ones. You can't sharpen it. You can't put a burr on it. It's no good to me as a cabinet maker. It may have other uses, but I bought one I know. It's no good for this unless somebody knows how to, to make it work for this. But this tool, you can sharpen yourself. It'll last, I don't know, would it last a lifetime? It's got four edges. And you know, easy to switch it around before you resharpen it at all. But I'm going to sh uh, show you how to sharpen one of the edges and show you what this tool can do because I call it a bridge tool. It, it, it's for the cabinet maker, the furniture maker. It's a hardwood flooring guy's tool. It's a boat builder's tool. Yes, it's a painter's tool. It's an artist's tool, craftsman's tool so many things you can do with this tool. So um, I'll set up and show you how to sharpen one of the edges. Let me put the camera on. A little better focus and zoom for you. You know, when a man when a man picks up a saw, let's say he picks up a 10 or 12 point hand saw and he starts to cut wood. Is he a boat builder, a cabinet maker, a furniture maker, a finished carpenter, a handyman? You know, what is he? He's using a bridge tool. He's using a hand. At that moment, he's just a guy sawing wood. And this tool is that kind of a bridge tool. So, anyhow, when you look at the tool, it has four edges on it. The edges have curvature in it. They're flat on the back. They have a chisel grind, which means just one flat bevel. What you're looking to do is when you take the, the tool out, it's got a burr which has that edge folded over, that beveled edge, and then there's a burr that's folded over. And that'll cut, but it'll get dull after a while, short time. It's also a jagged edge. You can do better. So I'm going to show you what, what I would do to the tool. I'd set it on the edge of something, normally out on the bench, but I'll do it so you can see here. I have my screwdriver straight up and down. I'm going to drop it on to the tool and pull it on and off the edge. And that's removing that burr. It's almost gone. OK, 
Okay, that's pretty well got the burr gone. A little bit right through here I can feel, but it's basically gone. In fact, some of it's folded back over on top, but it's pretty much gone. Now I'll chuck that in the vise and show you how we file to fresh metal. Put you in frame. Now it's got a little curvature here, and you can see that flat bevel facing up to the sky. There's a little bit of that burr I can even see that I rolled back over. That's not a problem because we're going to file it. We're going to file this, I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to file this nice and straight. You could experiment with both directions. You know, if you file into the cut like this, you're not draw filing because draw filing is pulling the metal out or drawing it out from the edge. In this case, you're slamming into the edge. But you can experiment both ways. But you can see what you're achieving just by looking at the scratches that you're flat on the bevel. Run the file. It doesn't take very many strokes. 8, 10, 12 strokes. Okay, I've filed down to fresh metal. There's not much burr there because I pushed in. If you draw a file, you'll feel more burr here. And that burr will cut, it'll cut paint and so forth, but it's jagged for, for what we want. If you could see it under a magnifying glass. Now I'm going to smash this metal again. I'll make sure you're in frame. I'm going to consolidate that metal again, which is to say we're smashing it against itself with the burnishing tool, which happens to be a screwdriver. Okay, we have removed that burr, we'll put it back in the vise, doesn't matter which orientation, but put it in the vise, put you in frame, and I will burnish the tool with my burnisher, which happens to be a screwdriver shank. I want to, I want to barely fold this, I want to mushroom the edge over. I don't want to go too severe because you'll fold it under real quick and you, you'll be dull and you wonder what happened. Okay, there's a good burr on the bottom. I'll show you how it cuts. Put our wood in frame again. This thing doesn't care a whole lot about the grain, but it's always a good idea to watch your grain. I think the grain's going the other way, but... Big tissue shaving. I'm barely pressing. I'll show you these shavings. Push them back, back to you. In fact, they're still hooked to the wood back here. That's how deep, how deep and effective this is cutting. I lost some on the floor there. Big tissue shavings. I'll switch directions and see what difference it makes. Big shavings. Really serious stock removal. And, and I'm not straining at all. So, uh, planar marks, plane marks, hand plane marks sanding marks, scraper marks, poke shave marks, tool marks of any kind. This is a great surface prep tool. And I'm not straining at all. I'm just barely pressing. There's no heat in my hand. There's probably heat on the tool, but you, it doesn't, you don't feel it in your hand like you do a card scraper. You can experiment with a turning on an angle. And you can try different effects.